stream and seems to be live. All right, let's go see if I can on this computer. Uh, load up my dashboard. All right, and do we have audio? Let's see if should be plain. Yes, we do. Okay, perfect. Um, chat will sit over there. Kind of wonder. I don't have the option of like a dark mode, right? All right, so try and try and stream at five thousand kilobits per second. Looks like I'm holding exactly steady at four thousand eight hundred seventy-nine kilobits per second, which is pretty good. I think I'm trying to decide if it would be better for me to have um, like a window over here for chat. Or just do like an overlay eventually and have the chat over on this side computer so I can see. The only problem over here in a side computer that I can foresee is it's really small. Maybe, maybe I can pop you out. Pop out, move you to the left, put OBS to the right. For you on the left, we'll make you nice and big font. And dark mode. Yes, so now, now when anybody chats, I should be able to hear and see that. Um, okay, so ooh, the only thing is I can't actually see how many people are here. Not necessarily a big problem. I could always just act as if there's tons of people. I get on my phone, load that up, which reminds me, I kind of do want to share the link to this channel with um, tweet out that I am live Twitter. And I also want to share it on Slack. Then devs. To the Twitch channel. Um, but for the stat, current viewers three. So I don't, uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, let me know, uh, say hi in the chat. Let me know how things are, uh, are looking right now. Got a new, new place, new internet connection. Uh, everything seems to be fine so far, but uh, that's sort of what this uh, stream this morning is going to be all about before we start back up with the official Rust book streams. Okay, so continuing on with what we uh with what we had going on previously, we were uh we were in a coding game, specifically we were in the ASCII art uh problem. And I actually have a keyboard and mouse this time, so uh what we were doing was we we created an alphabet vector. Uh, we're printing that out right here so we can just take a look at it. And that's gonna match the alphabet that's passed into us here. So we should, um, the next part is gonna be, we need to print out each section of what we expect it to be. So like print this entire thing out, then and this entire thing out. So that's also gonna be interesting. We do have the height, because they they pass that in, like that's the height. That's the number of times we're gonna go over this entire line of input. 
So my entire idea was that we could somehow store probably in more in more vectors or tuples. Because we could say, okay, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for the five lines. And then as we loop through, we say like, hey, we have uh, we have Manhattan here. So print the first line of A of M, print the second line of A. Also, I'm curious about how easy it is to see this text on here. Uh, I'm not completely sure. I think this is the same size that I had when I last streamed. Um, but this is a new setup, so it may be, it may be different. Um, right, so I think tuples might be the best idea. Either a tuple or the... Um, like an enum, but let's let's try let's try tuples in a hash map. So what I'm thinking of eventually is in here we're getting rows. Like this is going to be each row of the entire text. So we want to go through and sort of like pre-extract what we're going to need uh, based upon these numbers and store them in these probably tuples. So to look at it, it's going to be something like. I'm also curious if you can hear um, outside. I've got the windows open and there's like an airplane flying outside, but I didn't see anything show up on the, uh, the, the audio monitor. Um, okay, so we have a row. Our hash map is going to look something like, okay, um, A, and then this could be either a vector or tuples um, if I do tuples it would be something like this um, a would be space hash space space because that is one two three four yeah so that's that that's the four size that is an A. And then a, um, a B. Well, actually, hold on. So would it, would it really be this? I think we do then a comma. And so the second line down here would be this one. So that would be hash space hash space. And so on. Uh, B would be uh, the second one, so starting here, so hash hash space space. And the second line would be hash space hash space. Uh, and then we can create the entire alphabet this way. Then we go through and say print the first one, then print the second one of each of the letters that we're, that we're looping. All right, let's see if, let's see if we could do this. I'm going to keep this up as a reference, but comment it out. Uh, so we want to create a new hash map. So we need to use standard collections. Is it, I think it's a hash map. That. Then we want to create a hash map here, so an empty one. So we have let alphabet equals generate alphabet. Uh, then we have let, it's mutatable because we're adding to it. And we're gonna call this the ASCII alphabet. And we're gonna set this into a 
hash map new that then we can then we can push things into hash maps uh did i iter tools standard vectors I don't think I did anything in here. So if I, I don't know if I have to, I probably have to bring it in. If I say use standard collections, hash map. Let's just sort of uh, create it real quickly here to make sure that I'm on the right path. So we're going to say let mutatable. Um, my map equals hash map new. Uh, then we should be able to say my map dot push. Um, I don't actually know if it's push or insert or, or something like that. Or it might even be just be add. And then I believe that the first the first thing in here is the key. So if I do something like hello. And then the second key is um, like the, the thing that's going into it. So if I do world dot to string to actually give like a, a full thing on the heap, then let's print line this uh, my map. So I sent it off and it's running, but uh, it's not doing anything right now. So my guess is that we did not do this correctly. Let's take a look at hash map. Standard collections hash map. Use that. We create it with hash map new. It's insert. So got that wrong. Insert Oh, wait, it's stopping. Okay. Um, I wonder if I can. No, okay. So I think Repolit is frozen a little bit. So I'm going to skip that and we'll just come here and, uh, and do it here. Do it live. Uh, okay, so we have our new hash map. We've created our ASCII alphabet. We now need to insert things to it. Um, which this is going to be interesting because we need to go through each row and set up all of the all of the letters. And I guess, because here's where it's one problem. If I want all these tuples like this, uh, I have to do them sort of all at once and generate them, and then I can add them in, uh, which would be a lot of letters to do. I could also do like A, A line one, or A line zero, is this. And then have like a a one in there that that increases the number of keys that you're gonna have by quite a bit. But it simplifies the creating of the hash map. Uh, the other thing is that maybe I could just create a bunch of uh, a bunch of tuples that are for these for each row. Maybe I can create a vector of these tuples. So we could have a tuple for A, and then starting with, um, with all of these, then a tuple for B. But that's going to be at position 0, 1, 2. And the reason that would work is because we have this alphabet vector. We could then sort of iterate through the alphabet vector, iterate through both of them at the same time, 
say I want zero from this from alphabet and zero from this. Now, sort of use the use the result of one to be the key and the other to be the value. Okay, that that will probably work. So what that means to me is that we need to create a vector. So let's also do that up here. Let mute. Um, what am I? What do I want to call this? Also, do I need to do this all in one here? Because I have an entire row. I probably just need to recreate the vector every single time. We have a row. We're going to say let mute. Um, not necessarily row. This is a this is a full string on a heap. We can we can iterate through that. I believe one character at a time. Uh, so our vector is going to be the uh, hashes. I'm going to set this to back. New. And that's a function. Okay, so we have this. We can now push into this vector as well. So we want to, let's loop through, let's see if we can loop through the, uh, the string and, and sort of do that appropriately. So we're going to say for, uh, I guess it's going to be character, uh, character um, yeah, character in, it's going to be the row dot iter. So inside of here, we're doing a for loop within a for loop. We then want to print out, so print line character. Okay, let's see if we can get all the characters from the first row. Fail to resolve use of undeclared type or module vec. It's not. Is it capitalized? No method name iter for type standard string string. Do I not need an iterator for strings? The trait brown center string string uh, center iter iterable is not satisfied for character and row print line this string is not an iter maybe try calling dot iter uh, I thought I did that so let's go let's go find the iterable on standard string string so. Oh my gosh, it won't let me press capital S. I don't have like caps lock on or anything. It won't let me press capital X because that's the search. That feels like a bug. Can I put the uh, capital S here? Yep. No results for string. Okay, so let's. Traits. Okay, can I do standard? It's dot cares for characters. Oh, perfect. And uh, thanks, Avers. Uh, welcome to the brand new um, the brand new studio that I created for myself. Row dot cares. Uh, type annotations needed for our hash map. Well, okay, so it's because we're not putting anything in here yet. So when I create it right here, it's going to go ahead 
take this off. You're currently looking at the getter tools documentation. That's why you won't find string. Well, I was trying to search for string and, uh, and I ran into a bug with the documentation. You'll so in here, I clicked here to type string and I can't do an S because you type S to search. I can only do tring, which I thought was uh, kind of funny. But it also is a little bit frustrating <laughs> and Um, okay, so what are we doing? We had that type annotations needed for our new vector, which are we pushing into there? No, we're not. So I can also comment you out until you figure out what you're supposed to be. Um, okay, so it's getting the spaces and the and the hashes. So that's perfect. So we can now recreate our vector. And for each one of these characters, what do we need to do? So we need to go in through, um, we need to loop within loop five times down, four times for each one across, but for the entire, this entire level, this entire length. Yes, but those are not the standard library docs, but the ones for the crate iter tools. Um, oh wait, so how do I get to the standard library docs from here? Is there do I, is there no button? Do I just have to go back here and then I can do it? So search. Um, recent releases, that was two minutes ago. But where's the standard documentation? Docs.rs is a host for crate docs. I don't think you'll find the ones for, ah. Oh. Okay, hold on. Maybe I just need to do Rust documentation and just go straight from Google. This is the documentation I wanted. Well, wait, this API documentation here. Yes, okay. Oh man, it looks so similar to each other. Does it have the same problem? If I come in here. Oh, this one I can type with a capital S. Um, so this one doesn't have the bug. It's the, uh, it's the other one that does. Okay, so for each, for each row, and we're already going through the height here, so I only need to do one loop here. Uh, for each row, I want to loop through by like four times and put those characters in here. It looks the same because docs are all generated by the same tool. Um, except it has that that problem with it. I wish that it had a it had a link to the real like the the main core documentation for the language in there, as opposed to just the libraries. Okay, so uh, for I don't know if I want to do just a pure loop through in here. I'm thinking I'm thinking that I want to set up a sort of a horizontal counter and I can do like okay 0 1 2 3 and then on the fourth one so starting on 4 go to here or that that'll be the fifth one and hit that so that would be my loop is like okay just go through these ones. 
And I wonder if I want to do um like a let mute. This will probably be reset, won't it? So I want this out outside of this for loop. I want to say something like let mute um letter index and we're going to initialize that to zero and then we'll start counting this up by uh by four of these and then um okay so go we'll do um that hashes we'll say okay let next letter index equals letter index plus four uh we have our mute hashes uh take that away i'm just going to do a numbers for loop for this one and we're going to say okay from letter index uh well for we're already using i so maybe we'll just use like j in letter index dot dot next letter index uh then we should be able to stuff whatever we find in here into our our vector. So we'll say uh, hashes dot push. And these are going to be slices, aren't they? It's going to be like individual characters. I could turn them into full strings on their own. That would take a lot more resources. Um, and I'm wondering, we may, because like we, we own, Ro owns this right now. We're looping through the row. I bet we're gonna have a ownership problem if we do this. Uh, okay, so let's push in. It's um, row of index J. Actually, we want to create a, a tuple for this, right? Which is these right here. Um, although if I do, if I do a vector, it could just be a vector of vectors. I'm not sure if there's any like a, a massive difference where like a vector would be better than a tuple in this instance. And enum, a tuple struct might be the best. And then we push that into there. Uh, I kind of want to just try this and see what we get out. So then let's, yeah, we're, we're going to run into trouble here because after we push this, we have hashes. Um, that's just like this, this temporary vector that we created here that's in this for loop. We want to push that into what is this going to end up being? This is just that this is that individual letters. So we want a full one. We want um, one that contains all of the rows for that, which is what this will do. Uh, it'll create like th this thing, except instead of uh, instead of normal parentheses, it'll be square brackets because it's a vector. But it will be across this line, this axis. So like a the top of a b c d like that. That might be that might be interesting too. Which is this could just be row one, and this could be row two.
And then we want to grab, if we know what the letter is, we just grab that thing and print it out. Okay, we could try that. So we have, we have our list of the hashes down like this. Let's throw that. We have, we, okay, so we have the entire row's worth in here. Let's create our ASCII alphabet hash map. And we'll push, we'll insert it in here. So we'll say, what do we call it? ASCII alphabet. Uh, insert. And we're going to put in the first row. So can I do something like this? Row plus... And then it's the um, it's the I here. So we're just saying this is row one. And then the second thing, which is going to be the hashes. And then I want to print out at the end of this ASCII alphabet. But we'll see whether or not we end up running into a lifetime ownership problem. Uh, the treat brown center string string is not satisfied. Hashes push row. The type center string string cannot be indexed by integer. Uh, so where is this? This is line 35. Okay, so when we when we pass, when we do row j, uh, it's an integer and it needs to be it needs to be a u string, right? Because that's what we see. Oh, u size. We see u size right here in order to do the same, like very similar thing. Let's do that as u size. Okay, cannot be indexed by u size. Uh, can we not index this by that? is not implemented for standard string string. Do we need to do we need to like break it apart in from strings into a vector just to then loop through it? Cuz like row is a string, do I want to after two string dot split that? Uh, dot split and then dot collect you cannot index strings. Okay, that makes sense So if I split and collect these into the row that should be per character uh, That should be a vector that then I can index into This function takes one parameter, but zero parameters were supplied wait where uh, 29 Oh, uh, string, I or split. I want to just put in nothing. Character constant, is it just that? Use dot cares. Oh, yeah. Right, because split returns an iterator. And cares also returns an iterator that then collect can use to turn into a a, a um uh, a vector. The type of this value must be known in this context. Okay, finally. So we're we're getting on, we're moving on uh on 35 here. So right here, hashes.push row j. So we don't it doesn't know what's in here. So it's just character, it's various characters. Um, when we create hashes, we need to tell it vector new, uh, we need to use the turbo fish syntax to tell it what type of, what type of things are, they're coming in here. Yeah, so and you need to indicate, you want to collect into a vector. So I think I can do this here. Uh, we're doing uh, just collect whatever. Uh, oh, wait, that's not where I put it. It's right here, right? It's 
back. Unknown there. The type of this value must be known in its context. Oh, does it not know what this row, like, does it need to know what's in here so it knows to put in here? Um, okay. Let row back. Oh, it's up here. It's not here. I did it on the wrong row. Thank you, Avaris. Okay, so this is gonna be a vec of type whatever. Binary operation cannot be applied to, okay. Yeah, I was hoping to, I was sort of like, oh wait, I know. Um, oh, it wasn't, it wasn't this, it was, Danny, Danny uh, shared this with me the other day and I've already forgotten what it is. It's, it's another, it is another of the um, macros that is similar to print, I think it's format, that allows me to return the string. So I want to format, so in, in insert here, we'll say, format bang and in this one it will just be uh, row and then that and then in this case i so hopefully that should combine it together to bring into here okay try this again all right so we have we have our hash map here so we have uh row three row zero let's take a look at row zero first because it's easiest to sort of look at here uh, so we have space, hash, space, 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 hash, space, space. Um, row one then is space, hash, space, hash, space, hash, space, hash, space, hash, space. All right, looks like, looks like it's working. So we have the rows here. What's really interesting is that we're only getting one of the letters, but I think that's because we need to increment our next letter index by the letter index. So at the very end, um, at the end of this for loop here, we're going to then say, okay, letter index plus equals next letter index. But give us longer ones. Um, no, we're still getting the same amount. And what we want to do is we want to, for J and letter index, this one should now be, letter index should have changed, because this is mutable. Letter index should start as zero, and then the next time it's gonna be four we just set this right here. Comes through again, we hit, oh, we wanna do this. We don't wanna do it all the way, like at the beginning of the next the loop through. We wanna come through and say, okay, we wanna loop through all of this top row the first time. So in here, we wanna move this inside of this loop. Letter index is gonna plus equals to the next letter index. We also want a stop. Cause like we're, we're eventually going to, uh, to run out of uh, letters here. And if we take a look, so we have four uh, total. So zero, one, two, three, four. We have 27 characters because of the uh, question mark here. So I think that should be um, when next letter index, so if letter index 
is uh, greater than or equal to, what is it? It's 26 times, oh, it's 27 times, and it's whatever the width of these, which is the L. So if that happens, then we want to break. Try this again. Oh, I forgot. I just push right there. Oh wait, expected use size found I32. If letter index is greater than or equal to, this needs to be as u size. Thread main panicked at index out of bound. So um, the length is 101, but the index is 196. <laughs> That's really high. Um, okay, so this is testing only one letter E, but it should still be like this full amount for whatever we're passing in. Length is 101 for this row, isn't it? Um, all right, what specific line? So our backtrace, check out, check out, check out. Where's our panicking, begin panic. Allocate the vector. Oh, I think it's sort of giving us, okay, here it is. Line 49, I think. No. I mean, it's telling us what's going on. So we, we happen to know that our letter index, we attempted to access this row way out of bounds of where it was, which is totally not, not allowed. So what we really want to do is make sure that we um, I think it's not 27 times L. And L is the L is the width, I believe, because it says in here, okay, the width L of a letter represented in ASCII art. So all letters are the same width. So we have 27 letters because of alphabet plus one. So one would think, okay, 27 times L, uh, 27 times, uh, let's, just, let's just do this in here, um, 27, times, uh, what was it, four? 108. So the width is 101. The length is 101. We went way over. If, if letter index, so after we do letter index plus equals the next letter index, and we want to make sure that we cap it and that if we hit this, oh, we need to reset it, don't we? Because as soon as we're done, if letter index is this, we want to reset the letter index back to zero. This might be fine, but we need to reset and say, okay, letter, letter index, set you back to zero, and then we break. So we start again with the next row. Well, now we're getting interesting, interesting results. Like row two here only has a vector of one thing. Row one got the first letter. Maybe. Not really. Did it get the last one? No, it didn't even get the last one.
But I'm not sure what, I think we're off by something in our math here. So letter index, we're starting back at zero again. Uh, letter index plus four. Oh, it probably shouldn't be plus four. This should be plus the L to make sure it's the, the width. Make sure we're not doing anything crazy there. For J and letter index, uh, expected I32, found U size. For J and, okay. Can I just let you auto figure that out? The trait bound, as this is not satisfied, the type centered vector care cannot be indexed by I32. Um, so we cannot use, we cannot cast here, apparently. So we have to cast J. Can I, can I say that it has to be a uh, U size? And it will figure it out. Expected one of at or in found colon. No, I so I can't tell what type to be. Uh, so, oh, so I can't do like an as u size here because it like, it freaks out at this point. Because it's saying, hey, expected i32 found u, oh wait, can I? put you in parentheses, I want the end result. Of course, I could just cast it right here. They're like, okay, J as U size. Expected I32 found U size right here. So this is row four, so zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's, so our math is definitely off when creating this. So we want to, yeah, our next letter index, so we're starting at zero. And then we're moving. Okay, so hashes uh, 4j and in letter index to next letter index. So it's inclusive with this one. So starting at zero, and I believe it's exclusive with the next letter. So. But even if we go to row zero, okay, that is zero hash space space. So row zero seems to be fine for the first one. Row one is then hash space missing the hash. So I think the other problem is that this, we're really sort of not getting what we want here because what we want is a, um, a vector of vectors in the end. And we're not, we're definitely not getting that. And we're getting row four and it's just a single vector and I definitely want a vector of vectors. So my, my math is, is definitely off and like what I'm trying to do here. Um, we are running a little bit close to the end of the stream and it's very obvious I'm not gonna finish this by the end here. I think what I'm gonna do is sort of look through this on my own and, uh, and try to like, you know, figure it out, double check it. Um, if I end up getting it, uh, I will go through the solution on the stream. Um, but uh, one question, uh, Avers, if you're, um, well, 
if you're here or anybody else is here, let me know um, how was the quality of the stream? Was it good? Uh, as I mentioned, it's brand new internet, brand new sort of like studio setup that I've got. The lights are a little bit weird. Thinking about I might need to buy some more studio style lights for this because uh, I've got shadows like coming from the top of me. Stream quality is good. I haven't had any drop frames, and we're ste we're hanging steady at uh, 5100 kilobits. Audio is crisp and clear. That's perfect. I don't even have the microphone as close to me anymore because I don't have the um, I don't have a mount uh, yet for it. Um, perfect. And uh, how is this? Um, how is the text on this? Uh, I forgot to ask if it was readable earlier when I started working on it. For you, it's big enough. Perfect. Um, okay, well, I think, I think that's sort of good enough to, uh, to then continue on tomorrow working on the rust book so continuing continuing that entire thing so we can go and take a look really quickly of where we're at with it in our learning rust repo uh are currently at using hash map and vectors create a text interface to allow a user to add employee names to a department in a company for example, add Sally to engineering or add Amir to sales, then use, then let the user retrieve a list of all people in a department or all people in the company by department sorted alphabetically. So I don't actually, so this is chapter eight. I think we kind of have in the department lookup. This is pretty much where we've got. There's a lot for us to do here. We might end up, uh, we're, I mean, it's been a, it's been long enough that uh, we'll have plenty of things to sort of look up. This will most likely take the rest of the week, perhaps a little bit longer, sort of, you know, since I'm constrained to this one hour. And uh, then we'll get this through and be able to move on to chapter nine, which will be awesome. One more step closer to the end. So um, if you enjoyed this stream and would like to, uh, to see more of these and potentially get notifications for when I go live, then, uh, then click the, uh, the, what is it? In Twitch, it's the follow button. Um, not, you don't have to, uh, nobody has to uh, uh, subscribe to me um, unless you really want to. Uh, I am also putting these videos on YouTube for archival sake. You can find the, the link to my YouTube in the uh, description for my channel here. I also tweet out uh, when I'm going live in the morning, which uh, scheduled wise, I'm going live at 7 a.m. Mountain time every weekday. Uh, and then just randomly throughout the day, every once in a while, I might go live as well. Um, although I'm only doing the rest book in the morning. Uh, with that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you, Avarice, for stopping by and uh, and sort of helping me uh, me test this. We didn't get finished with this coding game challenge here, but I'll, I'll continue working on it. And when we when I do get it finished, I'll create a video showing like what's up and how how uh, uh, how I got it working. Um, all right, with that, um, I'm gonna sign off and go off and. Do the rest of my day, and I hope that you guys all have a, uh, a great rest of your day as well. And see you next time.